Hello and welcome back to the Jonas.net. My name is Donald Jonas. This is my fourth tutorial, Users and Groups on Zencho 3.0 64-bit edition. Zencho is based upon the Ubuntu 12.4 Server Edition LTS. So we're going to go ahead and log in on this tutorial as a root user. And we can go ahead and apply the port. 444 so we can log into our administrative dashboard accept the certificate and go ahead and log in and we're going to scroll down to users and groups and we're going to choose LDAP and once you click on LDAP, Zential does go ahead and configures the LDAP parameters for you. Creates a nice complicated password for you too. The only difference I have noticed in the new version of Zential 3.0, I noticed this when I was setting up my Thunderbird email client. I'd like to utilize LDAP as the global address book. In the previous version, the 2.2, the default port for LDAP that listens and I also notice this on some applications is 389. Well, I could not get it to connect on port 389. Then I realized it's utilizing port 390. That's just an FYI. That way, if you go ahead and utilize uh, LDAP for uh, applications or a global address book, you might want to try port 390, and we can verify that real quick. We'll do the telnet command on the local host, which is the server, and we'll listen for port 390. And as you can see, it is connected, so I thought I'd bring that up. Uh, we're just going to take the defaults here and enable PAM and bash, and then save changes. That's pretty much it as far as LDAP. This new version of Samba, or uh, Zential, is utilizing Samba, LDAP, and uh, Kerberos. Kerberos is a uh, We'll get into that when we uh, cover uh, joining uh, computers to the domain, but Kerberos is a very powerful uh, networking protocol that is utilized in the Windows environment. Kind of brings uh, Zential more and along the lines of uh, easier integration with a Windows Server environment. So let's go ahead and create a group. Let's call this group Accounting. Uh, we can give it a comment, and we can add it. I already created a few groups ahead of time. There we go. And let's go ahead and create a few users. I'll set up myself as a user. Set up a password. And I'll set myself up as a domain admin. This way I have the ability to join computers to the network and I have more rights on the network than a standard user. There's a service account created called administrator that comes in handy. An uh, example would be when you join another server to the domain, another residential server, and you want it to be a secondary domain controller. You need an account that is not going to fall under a domain policy and have to change the password on a regular basis. So this way you can change it as needed and it has administrative rights. But you do need to apply a password to this. It is highly recommended. And you can receive email on this. There will be uh, an email account for this. Great. Let's get back to the users. Now, the account I created for myself, I'd like to just cover a few different things. Now, this right here, user quota, will basically be my H drive. Uh, 500 megabytes isn't very much space. That's the default. I mean, you can change that. You can go under what is called the user template, and it'll pull the template information from here, and you can increase that. That comes down to your business needs, of course. Or you can just do it manually. We'll just do it manually real quick here. And I'll throw a few zeros on the end to give me a little more space. 
you get files nowadays that are pretty big so 500 megabytes is not very big you'll be getting calls right off the bat from users saying I have no room to save my information on the network so you might want to make that a little bigger form uh, Jabber accounts enabled if I want to give myself administrative rights I can just go ahead and click on change on that Jabber is the instant messaging server I did do a tutorial on that if you search under YouTube under Jabber you can see the configuration on that I may do one for Zential here on the new version You can set up mail account settings. You can set up quota type. You can set up mail aliases. If you want to retrieve mail from other sources, you have that ability too. Active Directory, it's already enabled, good to go. And Zopra, this is a group where I can give myself administrative rights. Uh, I'm not going to use POP3, uh, auto accept media requests. And pretty much it. It should push me to the top of the screen because it's going to add a few more options on Zopra. Decline meeting requests with conflicting times. Definitely decline reoccurring meeting requests. Okay. Click on change. These are just a few of the things you can do. And I'm going to save these changes. Now I would like to create two more users for this tutorial, which will come into play on a future tutorial I do when we join uh, computers to the domain. So let me set those up real quick. I guess we can just call this uh, Zen user. and we'll give Zen user access to the accounting group. And we'll create another one called Zen test. And now with Zen test, basically a standard domain user no access to groups just the ability to log on and do their work and no access to the accounting group okay we're gonna now I'm gonna create a directory so you might want to change your view I had already changed mine to where I put it on directory tree and I sort files by file types. Makes it easier to navigate. So let's go to the root here and let's create a directory. Now in this directory I would probably put all the network drives I'm going to map out. Makes it easy for me to find. In this directory I'll call it share. Now in this directory I can actually mount to a, an additional hard drive which is ideal because that way that hard drive would not be it would be separate from my primary domain controller so it would make backups very easily and I keep them separated from the domain controller giving me a degree of redundancy lots of ways to do your backups I like to keep everything in one directory makes it easy for me to find it it's not scattered all over the place um, if you do do it directly to the uh, server itself you definitely want to make sure you get those backups removed in a timely manner that way if anything happens your users data is saved so let's go into share and let's create a directory called accounting. And this will be the accounting network drive. We can map it out to their computers as like the Z drive, the F drive, whatever you feel comfortable with. And we're going to have to apply some permissions here. So right click on it and go to properties and permissions. Owner is root, but the group is going to be County. The owner can read and write, which is a root. The group can read and write because they need to do their job. Other, I would put as not available. And 
We want to apply this to the subfolders. Yes. And that's it. Folders created. Now we're going to go to file sharing. This gives you some information on your domain controller. We can change the description to whatever you like. It'll map out the home folder as the H drive. You can change that if you'd like. And I will apply a change to this. Not a lot to do here at this point. Zentral does configure a lot of that during the installation process, which makes administrative even easier. We're going to go under shares. Now we're going to share out that accounting drive. We're not going to sync it with the cloud at this time. Let's call the share name accounting. The path will be the file system path, which is it's going to be a slash share slash accounting comment. You can put a com you need to put a comment in there. It is going to require something. We can keep it the same. Guest access. Um, I don't really recommend that, especially on sensitive material. And we'll go ahead and add that. Now we need to set up access control. Who's going to actually have rights to this folder? And we're going to choose a group. And we're going to choose accounting. And they're going to have to be able to read and write so they can perform their day-to-day -day tasks. And then save changes. That's it. Now, if you browse to the server, you'll see accounting, and you can map out the drive. And when a user signs on to the PC, and if they're in the accounting group, they will have access to it. Very simple. And if we scroll down, we go into the file sharing. These other tabs are cycle bed. That can be enabled. Uh, Sama shares recycle bin exceptions, antivirus. I'm not going to cover these right now in the tutorial. I'm just going to keep it very basic. So basically, we created a group. We created some users. We set up some parameters on the users. We joined users to groups. We created a network share, giving specific group accounting access to that share. It's a relatively basic setup. It can all be expanded upon. That's the whole premise of my tutorials, to give you the basics. You get comfortable with it, and then you can expand upon it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you watch my next tutorial. Then my next tutorial will be my fifth tutorial on setting up the email and the webmail. And th thank you for taking time and visiting thejonas.net, and have a nice day.